Hi, I'm Victoria Field, co-organizer of Metabolic Health Summit. And today I have the absolute honor of introducing you to somebody who's actually served as a huge personal source of inspiration throughout my career in this field and has also served as that to my co-organizers, Dr. Dominic D'Agostino and Dr. Angela Poff. And to be honest, most people in this field, she is a true pioneer in every way. And that's why we're so honored to be able to provide her with our David Shevak Pioneer Award at our gala dinner coming up at Metabolic Health Summit. But before we get into this conversation with Sarah, I wanna give you a little bit of backstory about who she is. Um, Dr. Hallberg is actually the medical director of Verta Health, which is the first clinically proven treatment to safely and effectively reverse type two diabetes without the use of medication or surgery. And it's through Dr. Hallberg's research and work alongside Side Verda that they've been able to help so many people and honestly transform diabetes care as we know it. And as a physician and exercise physiologist, she's actually responsible for providing medical supervision to Verda's expert team of physicians and oversees the clinical strategy for Verda clinic participants. Before joining Verda, Dr. Hallberg founded Indiana University Arnett's medically supervised weight loss program, and she's also an adjunct clinical assistant professor of medicine at Indiana University School of Medicine and the Nutrition Coalition's Scientific Council Director. Over the past four years, Dr. Sarah Hallberg, unfortunately, has uh, been on a personal journey as a patient facing a terminal cancer diagnosis. And she's, you know, taken this incredibly challenging situation and allowed it to help her become this incredibly powerful voice when it comes to addressing healthcare inequality. Um, she's used her platform to spread awareness about the barriers that socioeconomic status, minority discrimination, and implicit bias create for many patients. You know, Dr. Sarah Hallberg is somebody who I feel has truly changed the world, and we would not be where we are today without Dr. Sarah Hallberg. So it is my absolute honor, one, to be able to provide her um, with this award alongside my co-host, and two, um, I'm just so thankful to be sitting down with her today and introducing you to her. Dr. Sarah Hallberg, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. It's, it's honestly, it's an honor to, to be face-to-face -face discussing this with you, chatting about your incredible career. You have been like one of the biggest inspirations to me and somebody I've, I've admired greatly uh, over the course of my career and, and also for my co-organizers as well. And I just thank you for joining me today in this conversation. Absolutely. I'm just thrilled to be here. And I think really the first thing that I must say is how great it is for you um, and of course your um, colleagues to putting on this amazing conference every year. I think it is so critical for the field to have a real science-based um, you know, conference that discusses a clinical problem, um, but also does it with a basic science slant because that part is so important. And um, I don't think we get enough of that at conferences. And so I really appreciate the work you guys are doing and very much admire all of you. Oh, thank you so much. That really means like a lot coming from you and just considering what you've done throughout your career and what we're trying to do as a platform. Thank you for that. That, that means a lot to us. Um, and, and as you know, we uh, each year at our gala dinner, we give out an award called the David Shevak Pioneer Award. And this is named after somebody at name David, who I knew personally, who suffered from a glioblastoma a diagnosis and persistently went to his physician asking for ketogenic metabolic therapy at, alongside his standard of care. And it was kind of that act of advocacy that literally started this big waterfall of, of research of a pilot study, went on to clinical trials over at Cedar sinai So it's you know, it's, it's named after somebody who really tried to push this whole thing forward and, and has really affected a lot of patients as a result. And when we thought about who we would be honoring this year, there is nobody that we could think of than you who is more deserving. You have continued to challenge the status quo through your research, through your work, through your innovation with Verta Health. I mean, you've literally changed the lives of thousands of people. 
And it is such an honor to be able to um, say that that's why you're our third annual recipient of our David Chevak Pioneer Award. Congratulations, Sarah. And just thank you so much for everything that you do. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been a a joy and an honor, you know, I mean, so I went from being a primary care physician, um, you know, to getting to work in this space and making that transition or initially um, at Indiana University Health was such a game changer for me as far as career satisfaction goes Mm -hmm. And as far as, you know, knowing that I'm doing something that is helping other people, which is so, um, you know, is so important uh, and can be something that's really difficult to find anymore as physicians because we get, you know, beaten down for everything and, you know, we're uh, not not moving fast enough or not take, you know what I mean? And then, of right. course, that, that, that right there is a huge part of the problem. We're not spending enough time with patients. And so I got to change that, you know, um, Mm -hmm. mid career. And I'm so fortunate to have worked with all the people that I've worked with. um, And both as colleagues, and then again, very importantly, as patients, Um, you know, they've taught me so much and um, uh, made me not only a better physician, um, my interactions, but um, made me a better person, I think, you know, in the sense that you have these wonderful people in front of you who are working and want to succeed so badly. You can't help but want to, you know, be around and and do everything you can to help them. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been pretty incredible to, to watch like your career kind of over, over the course of time change and, and just see the impact that Verda has had through your work as well on the research side and on on the implementation side. I mean, it's really made such, you know, a a significant difference. Um, And for me, from my perspective, your entire career is just like one big accomplishment and just incredible, (laughs) but, but I would love to hear from you what are the, some of the key highlights um, for you that you've experienced along the way um, in doing this important work? Um, well, I will tell you that, you know, I always like to say the, it's the pivots in your life that are key and you just have to have an open mind and be willing to embrace pivots because people think, oh, no, no, I've got to stay on this one course. You know what I mean? Um, And and this is the only way that I'm going to succeed. And I think that the um, biggest things do revolve around those pivots. And some of those pivots came about because I was really mad too. Mm -hmm. So like open, being open to being mad and instead of being just mad about it, doing something with that anger, right? Turn it into Um, something good. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Turn it to something good. I think that's actually, it's difficult, but it's easier than people might think if they give it a try. You know what I mean? Don't hide from that. And the same thing, because it creates a lot of pivots that can be incredibly important um, in uh, a career and in expanding, you know, to help more people. One of the first pivots actually was when I first came into the area and was going to um, start the program at IU uh, Health, um, the program from scratch. So, you know, there was no obesity program and we began it and what, a uh, you know, experience that was to go in and, and see the things that you had been doing for, you know, at that point it's close to 20 years total because my master's degree, everything I had been low fat, low fat, low fat, low fat, low fat. And, you know, so the, the first one was a pivot in your thinking and admitting you were wrong, um, which is, was a huge, like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. It sort of changes your whole worldview, if that sounds crazy, but you don't, you're like, well, what else is wrong? Like, what else am I not, you know, being told about? And so, um, you know, that's where the pivots began, but, you know, they've continued up until, you know, right now, you know, you, you say, okay, that's not right. We, we've got to change the way, you know, we're doing that or whatever to improve things. And it, it's constant pivots. And I just say to, um, all my wonderful colleagues here, um, embrace the pivots. 
I love that. Embrace the pivots, use the, you know, the, the anger and all the roller coasters that life brings us to, to do good, right. Channel that into something meaningful. And you, you are such an amazing example of that throughout the course of your career. And, and when you say you get angry about, I mean, the way that you deliver, you know, in, in even your presentations, you can see like the passion and the, this like underlying, just, I don't know, you just really know how to channel that energy and, and put it into something really great. That's inspired so many other people along the way. Uh, I mean, look at your TEDx talk. It's like well over 8 million views because of the way that you, your work that you're doing and the way that you communicate it is just, it's hard not to just want to be, you know, behind you a thousand percent. And that's why we're just, we couldn't think of anybody more deserving of this, of this award because of what you've been able to accomplish over those years and over those pivots along the way. Um, you know, so I, I want to say we've been communicating back and forth over email about, about this award. It's just, it's so great to, great to see you face to face and finally talk a little bit about it. And, um, you know, even after just going through everything that you have and being on this very, you know, difficult uh, journey that you're facing, you still wanted to sit down and have a conversation with me today. And that, to me, this moment right here is just is just a, an amazing example of who you are as a human being, and you know how deeply dedicated you are to this field. From just a fundamental level, wanting to still have that conversation has been really blew me away. I'm like, it's okay, we don't we don't have to do this right now. And you 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 know, this just shows the kind of person yet that you are, and your relentless passion to to just continue to contribute to the greater good, no matter what has come up, what kind of pivots, what things you've faced along the way, that just is mind blowing to me. And honestly, nothing short of inspirational. And you've empowered so many patients along the process to regain control of their health, to reverse diabetes, all through food. I mean, it's been incredible to watch. And as you've gone from, you know, you've been a physician for so many years, but you've since sort of transitioned into like physician and a patient at the same time, you've used that difficult situation and you've become this powerful voice for health equity along the way as well. And you're using your platform again for greater good. And you've literally changed the field of metabolic health and metabolic based therapies as we know it. And honestly, like medicine, as we know it, in in my opinion, and I know in the opinion of our co-organizers, it's it's been um, just unbelievable to to watch along the way. So I, I want to ask you, as you've, especially as you've been facing this difficult personal journey. I mean, difficult is an understatement, right? Um, you're clearly more committed than ever to our field, to our community. But I want to ask, you know, what is your hope for the future of metabolic therapies? What do you hope for healthcare as a whole? I hope that I mean the the, the problem here is that. This is a systemic problem. It's going to take a systemic solution. Um, and what we have been doing um, pretty successfully, because it's going to bring about the next part, I think, is building up a grassroots movement so that people can, you know what I mean, um, support each other as well as we, as we, you know, those of us in the medical profession, you know, overall, everyone. Um, we try to get it together from a grander scale. We at least are starting with this grassroots, which I think is very important and very critical. And I think that, um, uh, again, establishes a platform for us to look at the big picture things. Okay. So we need to, you know, what I'd like to see with this um, uh, therapy is number one, um, is to make it available to everybody. Okay, you know, one of the biggest criticisms is people can't stick with it. And I always say, sounds like someone who's never tried to stick with it before. You know, you can you can, you know what I mean? You need support. Um, This is lifestyle changes are not easy. You have to, you know, um, be really supported and and, and motivated. Um, But, you know, that's the fun of working in this is to be able to give someone that. Um, And uh, and, you know, that way. Once we, again, get this moving, um, we can also um, see what happens as far as the health equity goes. So that is a component that we must make sure stays in place. So, you know, we're, look, we're talking about metabolic health. 
Um, we're talking about minority research, which is critical and we need to do. And it's really important to me because I may not be around, but I still have three kids that are going to be around. And, you know, they need to have a just um, healthcare system. They need to be able to count on the healthcare system that is um, going to be available to them in the future. And I think we're getting there, but we're not there yet where I can say, I'm going to leave you, you know what I mean, with a good um, uh, background, a good thing that you can rely on as far as, you know, healthcare in general goes. Um, uh, very critical. Um, and we have to start with the ground gra grassroots that we already have, you know, really thanks to you. Um, thanks to so many other wonderful people um, has really um, become robust, you know, the gr grassroots movement. And once we get that really even more established, you know, we can start making huge strides in with the systemic solutions that need, you know, and really a lot of that comes down to battling the status quo. That is our next job. And that's what I would like to see happen um, in the future is that we really work on status quo and what is truly evidence-based and what is someone's continued pet project. Very important. That's a great, uh, that's a great point. And you, you've continued to battle against the status quo since the very beginning um, and everything that you've done and the health, you know, health equity piece is so critical to this and, and the research as well, as you, as you mentioned too. So um, is there anything else, Sarah, that you would like to say around this field as a whole, uh, metabolic-based therapies and, and your work with, with Verda and just your overall, just everything along the way, what would you, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, yeah, I guess the other thing I would like to say is just, um, I want everyone to, to, understand and appreciate just how much Verda is contributing in, especially in the research and that the, the, um, uh, I guess the goals and the motivation and really overall the moral compass of the team that I work with is unbelievable. And I just have to give them shouts out for everything because we've put out some really good research and we've got a lot more in the pipeline, so to speak. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Um, so uh, that, that would be my parting thing was just a big kudos to them. Awesome. Yeah. You guys have really just as a group done so much, honestly, you've changed the world in many ways. You've changed diabetes care as we know it. And um, I know I speak for so many people in this field, just to share how deeply grateful we are for you, for your friendship over the years. I mean, I, when I say like, you've been a huge inspiration to me and somebody I've, I, I've admired, honestly, I, I mean it. And I, I just thank you from the bottom of, bottom of my heart, Sarah, for everything um, that you continue to do to this day. Thank you. thank you as well. I appreciate it all so very much. I'm so honored.